Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's September the 1st and we're reading today in Galatians chapter 3. My password is the first verse. I'll read it for you. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath evidently been set forward, set forth, crucified among you. This I would learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. So it's the first verse really, that's my password. And Paul when he speaks to the churches of Galatia, he's not referring to them as idiots. He's not referring to them as morons. That's not the word foolish here. He's using the word foolish in the sense of being someone that has a very good understanding, a very good understanding of things, but they have been mesmerized. They've been bamboozled. They've been dazzled. They've been like a they've been like a, a rabbit in the headlights. They have been um, bewitched. They have been hypnotized, that's a good word, hypnotized, that they should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath evidently hath been hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. The Judaizers, these are Pharisees who come from Judea up into Galatia to spread their poison of return to the law and they're explaining to all these Gentiles oh yes it's it's good that you're a Christian you've now got to get back to your Hebrew roots Gentiles don't have any Hebrew roots <laughs> Gentiles are Gentiles not Hebrews he says oh foolish Galatians now he's not using the word foolish to think to mean that they are mentally deficient that's not the point they are foolish in the sense that they have been overcome, they have been overawed by these very powerful law preachers. And they have been, um, compl their minds have been completely taken over. They've become bewitched that they should not obey the truth. The thing that the Pharisees were teaching was untrue. We have to face that. It was lies. Um, and he, Paul goes on, he says, This I would learn of you. Let me ask you a simple question. Did you receive the Spirit through the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Well, the answer, of course, is they didn't become Christians by obeying the law. Now, they became Christians by the hearing of faith. Notice it's the hearing of faith. Faith is not something that God imposes upon a man to make him become a Christian. No, no. Faith is something that comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, which is the preached message of the Gospel. So, so he goes on to say, he says, Are you so foolish that having begun in the spirit you now are made perfect by the flesh now then we need to just hold on a minute what is Paul saying? he's saying this look you began by an operation of the spirit of God you were born again by the spirit now are you now going to become mature as a Christian through the flesh? and you say to yourself flesh? What's the flesh got to do with it? Well you see the law operates only on the flesh. You see in the Old Testament times the Old Testament saints they had the law of God to keep but they didn't have the Spirit of God in their hearts to keep it. No. This was something that was done in the flesh. Oh yes they heard the warnings of God they heard about the blessings of God but they had no spiritual um, enabling to give them the power 
to serve God. So the law then is something that operates on the flesh. And that's why those who keep the law, or those who endeavour to keep the law, should I say, that would be better, those who endeavour to keep the law discover that they sin and they sin and they sin. The law does not ever help a man along the road. It's like a, a road sign which can tell you which way to go, but it doesn't help a cripple along the road. That's what the law is like. And, and Paul goes on to talk about Abraham. He says Abraham uh, was declared righteous because he had faith in the promise of God. And the promise of God was blessing, ultimately, in the messianic kingdom. Um, <clears throat> and he said, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Now this is another important point. The law had blessings for those that kept it, but it had curses for those that didn't keep it. Now for, Christi for Christians there are no curses. You see, this means that we're way, way, way beyond the law. The law, even if you're a Jew, is part of your past life, not part of your present life. You are dead and buried and raised up with Christ into a resurrection life. And the law only brought curses because you kept breaking it. But now that Christ has died and he has borne all the curse for us, because cursed is he that hangeth upon a tree. The Lord Jesus bore all the curse of all the law so that there can't be any curses for you today. And this means that when you become a Christian, you enter into a blessedness which is far beyond the law. You enter into forgiveness of sins. Now in the law there was not true forgiveness. Sins were covered. As a Christian you enter into the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Now under the law the Holy Spirit only came upon certain key individuals to enable them to do their spiritual work. But normally it didn't come upon a man at all. And he goes on to talk about, he talks about Abraham. He says, you know, Abraham's true seed, okay, is Christ. You see, Christians are not the real true seed of Abraham, but Christ is. Notice, notice it's seed, singular. Christ is the true seed of Abraham, and we are now in Christ we're not in Abraham. No, no, no. Gentiles never become Jews. Gentiles never become um, um, part of the um, seed of Abraham. But Christ did, and Christ was, and Christ is of the seed of Abraham. And we become in Christ. And lastly, right at the very end, he says, If the inheritance be of the law, then it is no more promise but God gave it to Abraham by promise. You see, God promised to Abraham that he would bless him. In spite of the fact that he was an unrighteous man, he would bless him. And he would give to him a kingdom that would last forever. And he would cause Abraham and his seed to bring blessing to every family on the earth. And that never happened in Abraham's lifetime. Abraham never actually realized that blessing in his lifetime. He looked forward to a city whose builder and maker was God. And that, of course, even today is not realized. It's going to be realized when Christ comes to establish his kingdom, a kingdom of righteousness and holiness and, and justice, a kingdom that will last forever. Well, God bless you. It's lovely to talk to you again this morning. Have a wonderful day and look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.